U.S. legal analyst and um, professor at uh, St. Louis University uh, Law School and an all-around great guy. Also um, <laughs> was Gerald Ford's attorney. So you are the perfect person to ask this question. In all of the land, <laughs> and you've explained this before, but it's worth explaining again, and that is this. Do you agree or disagree with, with your commander-in-chief that the president has the ability to pardon himself? Uh, two parts to that answer, my friend. Number one, we don't know the definitive answer. So that will have to wait uh, eventually for the Supreme Court, perhaps. Number two, I think the better argument is that a president can self-pardon. I come to that conclusion by, by going to the text of the Constitution and the text of the, power, the pardon power, McGraw, and it says, the president shall have power to grant pardons and reprieves, except, so into our law school classroom, we say, oh, well, we're in luck. The Constitution will tell us if there is an exception right. for self-pardoning. So let's look at the list of things that are accepted in the text of the Constitution right. from the pardon power. Mm -hmm. Guess what? What? There's only one. Yes. Impeachment. Impeachment. Only one. So you can't pardon yourself out of an impeachment. Correct. And so if, if the framers of the Constitution, McGraw, were careful enough to grant Basically, it's King George III's pardon power. That's that's what we have. Right. Uh, one of the one of the most powerful and plenary p powers in the Constitution. But then the framers went on to say, "But here are the limits that we are going to put on it." Well, as long as they were in the business of placing limits, if they wanted to place a limit to say he could not self pardon, I think they would have said it. Right. They did not. Well, is that because? They thought about it and debated it and said, let's leave it out. Or never in a million years in 1780-something did they think that somebody would have the audacity to pardon themselves. Well, two, two answers to that. Number one, in, 17, in the late 1780s, they never dreamed that that would be a scenario that they had to consider. Because keep in mind, figuratively, McCraw, at the time, they're looking across the table at, at the person they knew was going to be the first president. Right. And I think that shaped some of their thinking and some of their drafting, George right. Washington. Right. I don't think they would have contemplated what we're seeing today with his 44th successor. Right. Uh, but, but on the other side, McGraw, when you read uh, Madison's notes and, and uh, other contemporaneous documents, they debated, they thought about, they considered semicolons and commas and capitalization. Right. And so if they got into the world of exceptions to a power or an exception over an Article I for the Congress, right. history teaches us that that was very deliberate and very thoughtful. And, and unfortunately for opponents of the president, right. the text of the Constitution does yeah. not have an exception from his pardon power, right. accepting out self-pardon. A, a law school professor once told me in one of my previous classes um, <laughs> that when you accept an, a pardon from somebody, mm -hmm. including, I guess, yourself, mm -hmm. and you accept the pardon, you are accepting guilt on whatever you're being pardoned from. Is that true? Your professor would be proud of you, Mr. Law Student Millhaven. Uh, the verdict oh, that was you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're very proud. No, of I me. wasn't <laughs> going to brag, but uh, you're right. It, the uh, the Burdick case in 1915, the United States Supreme Court held that there are two uh, triggers in a pardon. Number one, for a pardon to be effective, it must be accepted by the pardonee, and the Supreme Court said that the offer of the pardon carries with it an imputation of guilt, an acceptance, a confession of it. Mm. So what Mr. Burdick did was he rejected the pardon. Uh, Joe Arpaio, we talked about Sheriff Arpaio on the air several months ago, he accepted the pardon. Right. And you and I discussed as 
to his supporters uh, obviously hadn't uh, turned the page to Burdick because they were saying, well, this is a great exoneration and Joe right. didn't do anything wrong. Right. Well, uh, it's just as, the opposite. As a, it, as a legal matter, it's just the opposite. Uh, he admitted guilt. Right. So when Dinesh D'Souza accepted the pardon, he not only pled guilty in open court, but by accepting the pardon, he also admits his wrongdoing. It's basically he doubled down and, and readmitted his wrongdoing. I, so I, if if Donald Trump were to pardon himself, does he have to pardon himself on specific laws? Or can he write, I pardon myself over every single thing in the history I've ever done, and then everything he's done is he's guilty? How does that work? Uh, what you have highlighted what the, the point I made a moment ago about the, the uh, amazing power of the pardon power. And and when we look at the Constitution, and, and we can all pay homage to that document and, and the history giving rise to it, but there is one element of England that we had a revolutionary war to get away from, but the framers pulled it over and dropped it right into the Constitution, and that's King George III's pardon power. So it is this just rampantly powerful p pardon mm. power. And what he can do is he can say, I am going to pardon myself for dictating the memo on Air Force One about the July 2016 meeting right. in Trump Tower. So very narrow. Or he can draft a pardon similar to Gerald Ford's pardon of Richard Nixon, right. which said that Nixon is pardoned for all crimes and offenses against the United States that Nixon may have committed from January 20th, 1969 when he was inaugurated, mm -hmm. until August 9th, 1974, when he resigned and left the presidency. Can you pardon yourself and say everything I do in the future is pardoned? No. You can only uh, pardon past you, works. Well, it, it, to, it, you can only pardon past works, uh, uh, right. offenses. Right. And number two, keep in mind, a president's pardon power only applies to federal crimes. Mm. So if there has been a, a state crime committed by a, a president, a Supreme Court justice, or whomever, um, the, the presidential power would have zero effect on state criminal violations that a person may have committed. And that's the beauty of the separation of the federal uh, laws and the state laws and states' rights. Uh, that the, the, the framers of the Constitution maintain the sovereignty of the states. Now, I don't want to ask, we don't have time uh, to get into obstruction of justice and whether or not a president can or cannot obstruct justice. Because um, that's, that's I, I'm not going to do it justice, and we don't have time. But if, as Rudy Giuliani said, the president were to shoot James Comey in the Oval Office, okay, he and uh, he could not be brought up on charges because he is the president. He could be impeached. He would be impeached, assuming this were to happen. I know this is an absurd concept, but, again, we're in law school, and if the president's lawyer says it, it's how absurd can it be. Um, if the president shoots and kills the head of the FBI, he's not charged with murder because he's president, and he can't do that, uh, or he can't be charged. Can he be impeached, which he can be, and then as soon as he's a private citizen, can he be brought up on murder charges? Well, let's assume that the murder charge we're talking about is a federal crime. Yes. That normally, murder is not a federal crime. But let's assume it is. And the answer is yes. He could be brought up with it the day after. Not he's impeached. The day after he is convicted and removed from office by the Senate. Got it. But I, I think uh, just to make an editorial comment, uh, um, Mayor Giuliani's doing the, the, the best job uh, that he can, and he's very experienced. But um, I, uh, and, and he has some uh, legal opinions from prior offices of uh, legal counsel to Justice Department, but I disagree with him. I think it, it's not decided whether a president can be indicted mm -hmm. while, it, while sitting in office as opposed to your hypothetical. Right. But the Supreme Court told us in the 1990s that a president can be sued in civil court. And Paula Jones sued Bill right. Clinton. Right. President Trump is being sued in civil court or right now. And it seems to me that a, a finer point between what Mayor, Mayor Giuliani has said and my view is, I think a president can be indicted. 
I don't know that. The Supreme right. Court hasn't decided. Right. I think the president can be indicted. I think the fulcrum is, can he be tried mm. while he is in office? Because the Supreme Court McGraw in the Clinton case, the civil lawsuit by Paula Jones, went to great lengths about the amount of deference that the federal judge would have to give the president if it right. went to trial and discovery and depositions. Well, then you take that in a criminal context, it's sort of all of those distractions on steroids. So my personal view, and, and the, the mayor, Mayor Giuliani may be right, but my personal view is a president can be indicted and the fulcrum issue then is, can and if so, under what conditions can he be tried? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, why Rudy Giuliani did not get his <laughs> law degree from St. Louis University. Uh, he's some secondary school, but uh, <laughs> professor at St. Louis University Law School, KTS Legal Analyst. Uh, always a pleasure. Keep your bat phone on because it's, it's about to get really weird. Great to here. be with you as always, my friend. 9.30.